Hola, community. This is a recap of what happened last week in Blender today, 93. So, Blender LTS. Over at the code blog, Tom Rosen wrote an article about the plan for Blender 2020 and 2025. What's going to happen then? There's two big announcements. One is a long-term support version of Blender. That means that uh, there is one version every year that is going to be maintained for two years. So it's going to get all the fixes and all the um, crashes and security fixes, everything in that one version. So studios or anybody that wants to have, wants to stick with one version for more than three months, because uh, there is a new Blender version every three, four months, wants to stick with that version, they can. And if there is any important crashes or um, bad stuff going on in that version, they're going to be cherry picked merge back and release as 2.83a, b, or c, or d, for example. And developers can focus on Blender 2.9, which is planned to happen in August. Yeah, that already, yes. Not only that, but a new way of numbering the releases, including Blender 3.0, was also announced. So during the 2.8 era and 2.9 period, we're gonna keep the same numbering systems. Uh, 2.83 is gonna happen now in uh, May. We're almost almost there. Then 2.9 in August, 2.91, 92, 93, which is gonna happen next year around uh, the same time. That's gonna be the LTS, the long-term support of 2.9. And then 3.0, hopefully August, 2021 already. Yes. After 3.0, the proposal is to move into a, a bit more uh, regular kind of numbering system, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, without breaking too much. And if there is going to be a big break in because uh, there is a new, I don't know, particle system that's already in 2.9, that's one reason to move to 2.9. But if there is a good reason, like a big change in some area in Blender that breaks compatibility with previous versions, then that is a good um, moment to switch into 4.0, Blender 5 in 2025, who knows? That was kind of like the big thing this week, but there's also, as like every week, Blender improvements. So let's go through them like fast, rapid fire, come on. Sculpt mode. Blender's sculpt system keeps getting better. It just got a new cloth brush tool where you can just basically paint simulation. I made a couple of videos about it. It's just, just magic. There's a new setting to control the hardness of the brushes in sculpt mode, regardless of the tool that they're in. Before it was hard-coded for some of the brushes, but now it's a legit generic setting for all of the brushes. And finally, the multiplane scrape brush now got support for radial symmetry, so you can do ice cream swirls and stuff. <laughs> Next, in the mesh modeling department, Bevel now got a fix slash improvement that makes it so the axis is always consistent regardless of the direction of your of your mesh. So it could happen before that if you had the um, if you had like one part of the mesh with a custom bevel profile and you duplicate rotate that the direction where that bevel is happening wasn't very consistent. Now it is. Now it's gonna pick the longest side and call that the C direction. C up. User interface. This little quality of life improvement in the file browser is going to make finding files easier. You can just control F and the focus is going to go into the search field to start typing. So it's make things a lot faster. New theme options. In the animation editors, you can now change the color of the marker lines, even for active or inactive uh, markers. Whereas in the node editor, now you can change the depth of the grid in the background, or you can even disable it. More improvements on the theme, the colors of the strips in the video sequence editor, now they are all of the same value. They only change the hue, the color, basically. Before they were all like in different saturation levels and, co and values all over the place. So now everything is a bit more, more like organized and it looks a bit more chilled, like not jumping in your face. <laughs> Viewport improvement slash material preview. This mode where you can change your HDRs in the background. Now you can also control how 
much are they going to be blurred so you can see them more clearly you can see in the reflections so it's a bit easier to to control also, this setting was actually proposed time ago when the feature was added with, for having background, custom backgrounds. But now it's actually implemented properly. It's a bit faster than that was planned back in the days. And also it now follows the, the properly the color space of the viewport and your, your scene. All float images now have a setting in the properties where you can specify if you want them in full float or half float, so 16 bit. And to save a little bit of memory, it's on by default. So if you want to use the full on, if you have a 32 bit image and you want to use the full on range, make sure you go and disable the half float precision uh, setting in the properties. Cycles, okay, this one has three things. One is a change, one is a fix, and one is a new feature. So the change is that the SSS pass, the soft surface scattering, is now mixed with the diffuse pass. The same for diffuse transmission is also part of the diffuse pass. The fix is related if you were doing denoising with optics and you would run out of memory. It could happen that while denoising was running out of memory, it would throw an error about CUDA out of memory. No, that's no longer the case. Now that has been fixed and Cycle's gonna take care of allocating memory for it. So yes, your render is not gonna fail anymore. <laughs> And the last feature is also related to denoising, is the denoising in the viewport starts immediately. So as soon as you have it enabled, even if you have like one sample, it will just start showing. And that can look a bit funny. It, it has like a painterly look, yes, but it can look a bit uh, weird because um, you have just like big blocks because most of the, the first samples is very dark, very black, almost pixels. So in that uh, setting, this new setting, you can now choose when or at which sample do you want to start denoising. So um, maybe you want to see the first 50 samples fine and then after that add the denoising. I think it's uh, it, it makes it, it's nice flexibility, but community gave feedback in both ways. Some want to have it uh, starting at 50, 10 or 100 samples and some people want to see it right away. So the setting for now is to have it uh, starts right away. So you need to change it. So nothing changed. If you don't touch anything, it's just gonna keep working. Just the same. Shading, the node that was added last week, Vector Rotate, now has a new option where you can invert the angle more easily, which is a checkbox, pretty handy. <laughs> text editing, yes, text editing. So, well, while you're editing text, you could use the Alt left and right to change the kerning of the fonts where on the selection that you had on your text. Now you can also find it in the menus, in the font menu, kerning, and you can adjust it from there. And last but not least, the beloved video sequence editor now allows you to drop and open multiple video files at the same time. Yes, been waiting for this forever. I'm gonna actually <laughs> use it to edit this video. And the last news come from here, from the studio. We are looking for a back-end developer to join the team here at, in Amsterdam at the Blender HQ. So if you're interested in making open source tools for the world, for filmmaking, for anything, just uh, look in the description, there is a link where you can find more info. And that is all for this week. I'm trying this new concept, just see, let's see how it goes. I hope it wasn't too fast, too slow. It's about like throwing all the new features one after the other and you have to watch a full hour. But uh, it's also nice to hang out in the live chat. So I don't know, I don't know we can keep doing both. See you and I'll talk to you in the next uh, week.